Okay, good afternoon, everybody. So you know, I've been catching a lot of stuff out of uh, the comments section. Um, a lot of people have been attacking me a lot lately for the me making certain videos about Marcus Rogers because I go by the Bible. Okay, the Bible's clear on certain things. Okay, um, I'm not going to waver in that. I'm not going to justify my behavior. I'm definitely not going to put um, some kind of title in my video that people are going to click to it just because I know what people like. I'm going to go by what the Bible says. Okay, that's just point blank. And people still want to make their comments. People want to sit there and say that, you know, I'm doing things that are wrong or whatever. I do what the Bible says. I'm not a religious person. Okay. I'm a faith-based person. I believe in God and God Almighty. Okay. Um, a lot of people sit and they want to get into arguments over theology or, or beliefs. And, you know, the Bible warns us about that, especially in 2 Timothy chapter 2. Uh, and I will get to that here in a few minutes. But, um, you know... I try to take the humble approach with everything. Uh, there are things that bother me. There are things that people say and do that aren't biblical, and I point that out. So if it's not biblical, then I defend the Bible. I'm not going to sit and defend character. I'm not going to sit and defend a person's position based off of an idea of what they think the Bible is saying. I've talked um, or made a comment uh, to a person called Mark the Messenger where he mentioned that Adam was off somewhere tending a field when Eve ate the apple. Or fruit. Apple is what I believe he used. The Bible says fruit. So I'm correcting the language. There's nothing wrong with making sure we get things right. The problem is, is people don't like to be corrected. People take the word correction and they want to use it for judgment. Okay, They want to say that you're judging me. I'm not judging you. I, a judgment means that I have to sit here and say, okay, you've done something wrong. Now I'm going to exercise a penalty. You are going to be punished for what you have said or done. That is a heavy toll to pay, to judge someone and hand a sanction. That's not my position. That's not what I'm doing. I'm simply trying to correct what people have been misinformed about or what people are saying that they think the Bible is saying when they're not actually saying that. So... I sent a response to Mark the Messenger saying that, you know, Adam was in the garden. Actually, he was within the vicinity when she ate from the fruit. Says he was there with her. He wasn't off somewhere else. And so in return, he sent me a long, lengthy Bible scripture about it, which he's just confirming what I'm saying. So when we're on the videos and we're talking about the Bible, we should get the Bible right. Okay, so I'm going to point things out. If your conduct isn't up to godly standards and you say that, you know, you're a pastor, I'm going to mention that, 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 it, that you need to be godly. There are so many people out there and I'm not on my laptop. I'm not searching for things to talk about. This isn't a business for me. This is, I love God and I care about God. I love God. He's my father. He saved me from sin and I am going to go and be with him one day. And even if I strive my best and he decides, no, no, you didn't do right. You're going to eternal damnation. Then that's the judgment. That's what I have to live with. But while I'm here, I'm going to strive to be the best I can. And part of being the best is to be humble, to be loving, okay? To take a different approach with people. Again, People want to make their comments about me all the time and say I'm attacking people or attacking one person in particular because I believe he's wrong on some of the things that he says. And, you know, when, when he says certain things and I make a comment, it's just a comment. But apparently it's touching people's fleshly desires and their fleshly state of being that they feel like they have to attack me. And I just love you. Just know that I care about you. And I want what's best for you. If you guys want to go that way and be entertained by that and you want to justify what a person is doing and you think that it's okay to sit there and, and put in the title of a video a lie to get people to click on it so you can hear something, by all means, go ahead. But in Deuteronomy and Exodus, it says on one of the Ten Commandments, I shall not lie. That is very clear cut. A lie is knowingly making a false statement. That's a lie. Okay. If I'm wrong, I can admit I'm wrong. If I say, well, I believe that this is what I heard, but if you're saying that I was wrong, then I'm wrong. Okay? I've got no kind of pride in me to do that. I certainly am not jealous of anybody. I don't care. Your walk with God is your walk with God. 
But if I feel like you're wrong, I will correct it. Now, obviously, like I said, I don't sit here and surf the internet. I don't search. I don't get on Google and search about a hot topic today and let me go talk about it. You see that because there's like things that come through my feed that have been out for at least a month or two or three or a couple of weeks. And they're like wanting to talk about it. I'm oblivious because the Bible says you have to be in this world, but do not partake of anything of this world. Okay. So I'm not going to get into the gossip train. God says he does not like gossip, it's slander. He don't like it. People will get these ideas and see a concept video of something, and then they want to make a video based off of it. And what it is, is it's a concept that somebody is trying to create. It's not even here. It's a concept. We've seen some of these concepts in movies from years ago, 20 years ago, 30 years ago, 15 years ago. Okay, these are things that are nothing new. But the times we're living in, it's more prevalent now. It's more at the surface and we can see it. And then now we need to be aware of it and we should be a little bit more diligent and stay in the word of God and listen to what God has to say, read what he has to say, highlight the important pieces that can be pertaining to our lives and study that. So this is what I want to talk about a little bit about getting into foolish arguments. People want to make their comments on YouTube. I'll just say God bless and then move on. Some people want to sit and make lengthy ones. I'll respond with a lengthy one, depending. But I'm going to shy away from it because it doesn't do anybody any good. And this is what it says in 2 Timothy verse 23 through 26. It says, again, I say, don't get involved in foolish, ignorant arguments that only start fights. A servant of the Lord must not quarrel but must be kind to everyone. So the word must is an imperative statement. It means we have to do this. This isn't open to say, hey, the LGBTQ community is upsetting me and I'm mad about it, so I'm going to talk about it. It says you must be kind to everyone. I can disagree with them. I don't agree with homosexuality. I don't agree with transgenderism. I don't agree with people pushing that off onto my family or me because I believe God made man and woman. That's my belief, but I don't have to go and be offensive towards people about it either. And because I choose not to be offensive does not mean I'm a pushover. So I'm going to just put that out there as a declaration for others. You can disagree with things and you can kind of talk about those things, but making it about your business, making it about you personally so you can attack them, that, God doesn't want us doing that, okay? So it says, be able to teach and be patient with difficult people. Gently instruct those who oppose the truth. Perhaps God will change those people's hearts and they will learn the truth. They will come to their senses and escape from the devil's trap. For they have been captive by him to do whatever he wants. So again, we see that we are instructed to teach and to be gentle about it. And God will change. God will change those people. It's not up to me to change anybody's position. And I've said that before, even in the comments. I'm like, okay, well, if that's your opinion, that's your, your opinion, I'll pray. I'll pray for you. I'm not going to get into this combative situation. Now, I make videos of people. I could sit here and make videos of T.D. Jakes, and I can make videos of Joel Osteen. I can make videos of Jesse Duplantis, Joyce Myers, which I commented about one of Joyce Myers' video about getting tattoos. It's wrong. I didn't come to Christ until three and a half years ago, so I was living in the world and getting a tattoo. People will reference Isaiah 65, I think it is, in a scripture where it says God will have it engraved on his hand, okay? And they take that as the word of tattoo so they could justify to go get what they want in their own fleshly desires, okay? Once you come to Christ and you know that getting tattoo and marking on your body is a sin and you continue to do it even though you say you're a man of God, then I'm going to question that. Is that person really a man of God? Because... God says not to do it. I know it's wrong. I shouldn't do it. Then I'm not going to do it. Now, Paul says to repent daily because sin is strong. We all sin. I still sin. I have to repent. I get angry. I get mad. I say things that are hurtful. I have to repent. Okay? I'm not the greatest person on the face of this earth. I'm not above anybody else. I'm right here in the dust of it, in the dirt of it, in the clay of it with everybody. And people will be offensive to me in their comments. And I get angry. And I'm like, man, 
And I start to think things I probably shouldn't think because that old person comes back. Again, like I said, I've been doing this three and a half years, so I'm freshly new. And the devil knows that. Satan knows that. If you're a youngster in Christ and you're a baby in Christ and he's giving you the milk to learn and grow and mature, so then you have substance when you talk and you speak and you teach, okay? People will attack you because you're young. It's easier for someone to give up when they're not invested. Or it's easier for someone to give up when they started to invest and it starts becoming difficult. So, people, I care about everybody and I love everybody. There's people who will make videos. There's people who will say things I disagree with. There are some things that I believe Smart Christian Channel has made a comment or two on that I disagreed with. Alan Parr's made a few things I've disagreed with. But I'm not going to go on there and, and, and sit there and make mean comments or put them on blast or anything like that like some people do. Uh, put them on confrontation or something like that, I guess is the word. I'm, not, I'm just not going to do it. There, there's no substance in that. There, there's no substance in that. And, you know, as far as... Oh, people mocking God? Yes, I get offended of that. I get mad about it. But I'm not going to go out and harm someone behind it. Now, I know people say this all the time and they justify it or whatever. Yes, you could be angry. You can voice the fact that you're angry about it. Okay. But you got to pray for that person. The Bible says even sinners and Pharisees love people. That's nothing. That's easy to do. Love thy enemy. Right? So I don't know the word verbatimly, but God instructs us to love our enemies. And what better way to love our enemies than when someone sits here and talks against and criticizes and blasphemes the very thing that you love and care about so much that you're willing to die for? What shows more love and forgiveness than to say you forgive the person and move on and just pray for them? Instead, we want to get up and talk against people and and make comments about it. Those are the fanaticals. And we see what happens when fanaticals get involved with other other groups of people. Again, I'm not going to start throwing certain groups out there because we know who those groups are, okay, that will go and kill people if you disagree with them. But God's instructed us not to be that way. So one could even go on a ledge and say the people that are going and doing that don't know God. They don't know God. They don't know the Bible. They don't know truth because God instructs us to love those people, not to cause those people harm, but to love those people. Being a Christian isn't for everybody because not everybody wants to be a Christian. Everybody wants to say they're a Christian, but then they want to go live unholy lives constantly. People want to say they're a Christian, but they don't want to go and repent for anything that they've done. I'm saying, people, that, you know, it is what it is. The Bible is clear on those things, okay? If if this was a business to me, like it is, like some people have indicated to others, it's a business, Christianity is a business, I will be sitting down in my room, making my room decked out like it's an office of some kind. I'd sit at my laptop with my cup of coffee, my donut or my omelet or whatever, and wear my suit and tie or, you know, dress really nice. By the way, I dress like this every day, minus the tie. Um, But I go there, I sit down and I get on the internet and I start searching about other pastors or other churches or other things to talk about. That's a business. I don't do that, folks. I read my Bible. I share the word of God to you. And I hope that you guys can grow and love and forgive and move forward. Again, there's nothing wrong with correcting. Even Paul mentioned that to to Titus, that you can correct another believer. And he mentions this in Titus 2 verse 15. You must teach these things and encourage the believers to do them. You have the authority to correct them when necessary. So don't let anyone disregard what you say because Titus was a pastor. He was being, he was put in this position and called into this position to correct others. Does that mean that because I'm not a pastor, I don't have the right to correct somebody 
in what they're doing. We are to support each other. The best way you can support someone is by saying, hey, brother, hey, sister, I, you know, I kind of see what's going on. Are you okay? Or the, I mean, you know, you're not supposed to be hanging out at a bar because the perception is, is that you're drinking. You know, 1 Thessalonians 5.22 says to abstain from the appearance of evil. So if we're doing things that are not godly, if it's not godly, it's not righteous, then it's evil. This is very simple, and, and a lot of people don't understand this. They think evil or some kind of nefarious statements or actions have to be very profound, and it isn't. It's very basic because the Bible says so. The Bible says that if it is not of the Lord Jesus Christ, then it is evil. It is the Antichrist. What is the Antichrist? The Antichrist is evil. So, again, people, it's just basic common sense, basic, basic understanding of the Bible. There's things I don't know. I don't know a lot of things, so I'm not going to talk about those things that I don't know. I will ask questions. I will pray upon it. I will ask my pastor for better understanding. I will pray to God for better understanding and to reveal those things to me so I can bring it to you. I love you guys. Stay blessed. Read your Bible. Stay in love. We'll talk again later. Love you guys. Bye.